Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to today's special edition of Beyond the Ordinary Show. Um, and it's special in so many different ways. It's like, it's, my heart's just so full right now. First of all, speaking with Sandra, um, right here pre-interview and, and what she's sharing and the things that I've been feeling and the confirmation and her insight into it. We're going to get deeper into that conversation because I know that you're all going to feel it. And many of y'all have probably been experiencing a version of it, if not a deeper version of it in, in your own personal lives in the way the energy is showing up for you. Um, and it's also, I'll call it bittersweet because Sandra is not going to do any more telesummits. In 2021, it's, her work is shifting. So it's such an honor to have her here on her last telesummit appearance on Beyond the Ordinary Show. And, and I know it's like always, it's just going to be this upliftment, this enlightenment that occurs for all of us with this time of Sandra. So again, we're going to dive into today's call. I highly recommend you just sit back, receive, attune, confirm, and enjoy. Enjoy today's Beyond the Ordinary show. Um, yeah, we're going to go deep into it. For those of y'all who don't know and who are new to Sandra, uh, you're in for an amazing treat. And again, my suggestion to relax. I hope you take that to heart and, and indulge in that right now. Um, Sandra's a way sure. She's an ascension guiding kind of gatekeeper. And she's been an interdimensional liaison since 1999. And she assists awakened humans through writings, videos, and creations focused on ascension. She also inspires the exploration and evolution of human consciousness, bridging the multidimensional worlds to create peace, self-realization, and a deep understanding of the ascension process. And I have to say, not just the understanding of the ascension process, but I have to say also the embodiment of it. And Sandra de definitely does that. She embodies, assimilates, and shares from that intimate understanding. Now, Sandra shares information as a pure conduit to empower, inspire, and accelerate the ascension of humanity. She's a published author, certified life coach, artist, and energy healer, and she now lives in Sedona. So with that, Sandra, welcome to Beyond the Ordinary Show. It's so wonderful to have you here. Thank you, John. Blessings, everyone. It's just so wonderful to just connect and kind of share this energy. I was feeling into kind of the container, the intention that we put around these connections, you know, John with a very strong light, myself, a very strong light. And I just love like when we come together, it just amplifies, it just creates this, this space, this expansion for everyone to kind of move into, you know, move into our divine self, our true self, and just share openly from the heart what we're experiencing. And I love what we were talking about before before we went live, uh, the energy, the last weekend specifically, going mm -hmm. into um, the states of bliss, just absolute peace, absolute love, just that flowy, beautiful new earth state uh, and walking around in it. And, and even like you, John, I would, I would do a, a task or whatever. And it was just, it was unshakable. You know, mm -hmm. no matter what was going on, you could take care of something and then, ah, there it is again, you know, and you wanted to, to grow it and expand it within the heart because it was just so delicious. It was like a spiritual elixir just flowing through everything. And I, I have noticed the impact on my creativity and my concentration. Everything has just been a little bit clearer a little bit easier a uh, uh, more fl you know again more flow and i know we've all been working with these uh, i call them the go creation windows right when all of a sudden it's like 2020 you're flat you're flat you're flat oh my gosh i can't move oh my gosh the energy and then go right go connect connect create you know and you have to like seize those windows because you never know when the next wave is going to hit and i noticed this beautiful creation window over the last couple of days. And even with that, that bliss kind of permeating everything now. And I don't know, can we describe it, John? Because it's not like a blissed out detached thing. It's like, oh 
my goddess, I'm feeling the, the vibration of a different reality permeating my consciousness, like literally permeating my consciousness, making me feel a different way every waking moment, everything, even sleep is different. Do you mm -hmm. agree? Absolutely. What came for me the week before this bliss just exploded in my field and it felt like it exploded. One morning I woke up feeling so peaceful and this energy running through me. It's like, I'm staying in bed for a while. It's like, I'm going to take this in, but it carried all day long and then it carried into the next day and into the next day. And it was so beautiful. But what led up to it was this period of vulnerability. I felt so raw and vulnerable and things that were coming up. It felt really tender. But it felt like something like my heart was trying to open in ways that I was trying to control and keeping it shut. And it felt so uncomfortable and again, raw, raw and vulnerable is what it felt like. And as I went through and I stayed with it, I wasn't trying to push it away or make it bad or trying to fix it. It's like, all right, let me be with this. And after I sat with that is when this surge started flowing for me, which is amazing. Right, right. I was the same way where it was, you know, when you're, when you're attempting to create something, you're working on a project. I've had a lot of projects running at the same time, but there's been this permeation of exhaustion for mm -hmm. me um, for, for many months, actually, since the summertime, it's been a little intense. And again, like you said, not making it wrong, just going, okay, this is just what's going on. But leading up to last weekend, there was, I was up at one o'clock in the morning, every night I, I just every day just mm -hmm. waking up at one o'clock and just bah I guess I'm awake now you know kind of thing and I would go on like hikes and activations with sisters and I've been awake since one o'clock in the morning I'm like how is this even possible that I'm like walking around when I've been so exhausted so there was like this interesting energy coming in that was like fuel you know and it's not like a caffeinated thing it's just like this consistent energy flow and i feel that that's a strong part of our embodiment mm -hmm. you know the strong unity not just as a conduit but the actual union and the self-realization really st stepping up now you know i know the the topic that we chose was creating peace because there have been so many lessons from doing a uh, global unity meditations now for four and a half years that I did want to share those because in a time where the external looks like a little chaotic, which is just the energy, you know, that was predicted massive dismantling, just deal with it, right? The best way you can. And for a lot of us, we chose, all right, well, maybe I need to lean in to creating peace within a little bit stronger, a little bit more. And I feel like the lessons that I've earned <laughs> through the Sunday unity meditations were totally applicable to mm -hmm. dealing with the situation in the external and what was going on internally, because sometimes it can see, seem like a mismatch, you know, mm -hmm. how you feel is so wonderful. And then the external is just like, you know, th throwing firecrackers in the air going, oh my gosh, it's chaos, you know? And you're like, hmm, all right, this is interesting because it's not just walking in both worlds. It's this consistent choice of reality that, you know, everything's amplified this year. So whatever you focus on, of course, whatever you meditate on, whatever you focus on is what you get. But now the feedback system, the reflection is stronger, faster, more amplified. So if you're really focusing on states of peace, creating peace, emanating peace, it comes back to you. It comes back to you. It's really quite beautiful. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes a lot of sense. It's beautiful. What I'm noticing also Sandra, is again, for so many years, of course, the topic of sovereignty and getting into our sovereign state and bringing back mm -hmm. into being within ourselves. But for me, there's a softness in the sovereignty that's landed. There's really soft. It's, it's that peaceful power, if you will. It just knows itself so well that it can relax into it. And the way that we emanate our energy for others to receive comes with that peacefulness. It comes with that sense of calm that invokes that right. in others. We can't help but become a resonance of that as we embody it in that way. It's amazing. 
Right. And even with all this, I've had a lot of focus this year in particular of broadcast broadcasting the Christed, Christed frequency in a different way. Mm-hmm. So it used to be a little bit, little bit of a push, right? used to be like, all right, I'm going to beam, you know, and then you kind of go on autopilot, the merge happens, the embodiment happens, and it's just kind of happening naturally through you and getting more amplified. And then you realize, oh, okay, I've, you know, the body can sleepwalk through a whole day and just do whatever it did the day before you've trained it to do that. And now as we train the body to produce a different outcome, a different situation, a different experience, really starting to notice that as I paid attention to qualifying all of my thoughts with the the Christed frequency, the crystalline frequency, peace, harmony, grace, unity, and then my emotions the same way. You know, once I cleared the emotional fields and it was, okay, if everything's created through the feeling state, let me feel my true self. I am presence, whatever you want to call it. Let me just feel God flowing through me. And then, of course, it changes your activities. You know, it changes what you create, how you speak, how you present yourself in the world. And we all attune to that. We're like, oh, you know, that we're done with that, that self. And now we're moving into another one. And then it just kind of all of a sudden, it's like the, the body vehicle as a conduit is starting to go into this crystalline light body state and has that resonance to it. Mm. You know, it, it, we've all seen, you know, your skin getting sparkly. Obviously, we're all transferring the carbon to the more crystalline structure. But the light body, too, feels very different. It's just emanating these frequencies and I love that it's kind of going on autopilot kind of like oh okay you know it like a like a crystal would be you know a crystal has such resonance when you're commanding it and getting all your DNA and everything activated there is a resonance point like a tipping point where all of a sudden whoa now you're in this bandwidth of the frequency of peace and especially with like the the unity meditations just teaching us how to instantly go into that state of divine neutrality Mm. of peace you know divine neutrality is a term that came to me back in 2011 i've been teaching it since then and it's it's not just the balancing it's the actual trinity so it's not one side or the other or none of my business it's taking on this I call it the Trinity circuit where all of a sudden there's such balance and I don't mean divine neutrality as in, I'm just going to kick back and everybody just, you know, have at your realities. It's not like that. You can still take action, but it's action from a point of the heart, sacred center of the heart that allows you to make better choices in the moment you're not swayed or pulled by emotional constructs or good guy bad guy you know that's gone it's just dissolving completely and i know that a lot of us are kind of paving the way for that experience just by through our embodiment and all the practices that we're doing but i notice with the unity meditations people who are tapping in for the first time you know you've got people who've been working together for over four years and you create such a field when we all focus because that was the whole intention divine human consciousness let's play with what unity consciousness can actually create when you get all the humans focused at one point in divine neutrality on peace you're not doing something you're not trying to fix things or override this guy that guy it's not like that It's just, let's just see what happens when we all just become, (laughs) you know, become a source of source, a force of source. And you start to notice like the people who come in that are new instantly feeling, oh, oh, oh my gosh, that was really beautiful. Like they, and all of a sudden it feels like that frequency is getting stronger and we're able to broadcast it, you know, again natural conduit of that frequency and kind of holding that space 
And of course, we've noticed interesting things along the way. We have shared visions, mm -hmm. telepathic communication. You start to see each other and feel each other. You can feel the field, which was the original intention. Of course, everything starts with that intention. You're going to learn how to do this organic divine human thing where you can all focus and create, focus and create, get really into your creator state of beingness. And I feel like even though it's been four years and yeah, those of us who are working together, definitely it's stronger, but I feel like demonstrating to humanity what's possible. And of course, all the scientific experiments that have said, yes, if you all get together, there's definitely an impact on the field. Why not practice? You know, because the more that we practice, the more our skills really become second nature. You know, it's becoming, it's becoming us. We're just becoming that. And then it's kind of like erasing the lines of all work that we've done before that, you know, it's just like, oh, okay. And now I'm at the next level. Yeah. It's quite beautiful. It's extremely beautiful. And what I noticed, and then again, the containers are so important because they help us acclimate. And again, we've gone through and it's like, okay, I am the I am. And we've, we've gone into the practice and we've gone into the practice of claiming it, which has been a wonderful attunement. But as we get into this and as the energy is flowing in, there's all these events that are helping us to amplify and to embody the frequencies. It comes to a point where it's no longer a mental aspect or trying to embody. It's like all of a sudden you recognize yourself through your actions and the way that you're being with other people as that I am presence. There's a beautiful organic flow into it where it's like, you just, you just know, it just is. This is what, who I be is that I am that is painting this picture that I am in the world. This is amazing. Right. right. And there's been so much to describe that state to us, but when you start to experience it, mm -hmm. gosh, it really, just takes the old self away. It just feels like so unfamiliar mm -hmm. what you were the moment before the time. I mean, time is definitely collapsing in this stage. You feel it. You're so now. <laughs> Everything yeah. is so yeah. now and so day to day. And it's kind of interesting because I've I've always had the role of kind of predicting and, okay, this is, you know, what's going to happen this year, blah, 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 all of that. And we were talking earlier about the waves coming in in December that everyone seems to be feeling right now. And yeah, that's there. It's in the field, but it's also happening now. And I feel like the, the folks that really have that heart coherence and that true comprehension of uh, what that I am desire, you know, that passion, that drive, like, this is the time, you know, I'm really going to do this, the dedication to it. I really feel like we're starting to anchor into the collective consciousness, what that December, what those December events are going to be like, you know, because for me, it feels like a complete change in perception of realities, the kind of uh, bliss states. And, you know, we're just calling them bliss because it's just so, it's a divine, unconditional love. It's not up there, out there, flighty kind of thing. It's so, it's just this pure embodiment, but you feel it changing your light body, changing your DNA. It's changing. You can feel it transforming. You're so aware, like I'm acutely aware of how I am transforming. Mm. And the more that I allow it and be present in the now with it and asking myself, how do I feel? What do I need right now? You know, this continual expansion is, is, uh, is lovely. But that state, if that does indeed happen globally, of course, we're always honoring free will. But for for, for myself to see the sun get recoded over the summer, mm -hmm. very interesting projects. A lot of cosmic folks, galactic folks have been tuned into that. But now the sun has changed the way that it 
broadcasts our frequency because we use the sun to kind of broadcast into these realms. So the sun has changed the way that it's emanating frequencies. And even lately, they've been describing some of the sunspots, not as flaring, but as flashing. I'm like, oh, here mm. we go. <laughs> kind of interesting. But uh, and as we see the solar activity kicking up again, you know, that was all predicted. It's like, here we go. Here we go. Sun's opening up, different codes coming in and immediately feeling it. Immediately going, oh, okay. Okay, here's that frequency. Let it build. Let it build. Let it emanate out. Again, there's only one of us here. So let it emanate out through the collective with the intention, any open heart, any willing heart, let them receive. Let them receive that light. And you don't do anything. You know, you're not doing anything outside of being a conduit for that frequency, true unity, consciousness. And it feels like the December, if you want to call it a gateway, uh, solar eclipse around December 14th, all the way through mid-January, which is always a heightened spiritual time. Mm -hmm. But this year in particular involves this solar flashing experience, which is consistent. The sun, the sun is already doing that. You know, we've already got flashing activity for the last couple of years. However, the way that it recodes your reality and your light body and your DNA and everything is palpable. Some of us have had those, that experience this year. The soul, it just feels like this wave of light just blasts you, blasts all the illusion, all the lower self completely away. You're in the void, but it's full of love. And it's just, and you feel in that moment, oh my goodness, this is the point where I step off, right? This is the point where I step away from that old reality altogether into the new. And I feel that we're anchoring that experience because this light coming in is going to give a lot more people that experience. And which is beautiful because it's certainly been a year of dismantling and revelation and all kinds of things going on. And it will continue to be rumbly tumbly all through November, but December brings us a brand new energy that we're already starting to feel. Mm -hmm. And that's beautiful because it just, it, if it's going to be an amplified version of what we're feeling already, bring it on. Yeah. Gorgeous, absolutely. right? Gorgeous. Just for, to prepare us just in awareness of what can come through. So again, before this wave of bliss came up for me, I had like these deep feelings of vulnerability, again, the rawness. Do you see the possibility of that clearing through our emotional body in, in different ways also prior to? And again, the advice, instead of pushing it away, trying to fix it to really be in relationship with it. Do you see that happening in, for a lot of people in their experiences as part of the metamorphosis of the energy? Yeah. And I feel like we're, we're dealing, you know, the whole, this whole thing is based on a metaphor, right? It's all metaphoric. Mm -hmm. So you can see like what's happening in the collective globally as a form of revelation, as, as a out picturing of what's actually happening collectively, internally, the ousting of feelings and choices, and certainly everything that's going to happen in November, especially in the United States with elections and everything like that, brings up all of this, you know, oh, I, I wanted this and I didn't get it and all, all that stuff. You know, all, all of those um, internal turmoils or trauma or feelings of betrayal, you know, all the things that people haven't dealt with, you get a huge trigger <laughs> in November of... Uh, of how to, to deal with that, you know, and it's, it, it's been happening all year. Certainly, you know, you want your free will. Well, let's just tighten the grip a little bit more. It's just an, an, or it's like an organism. It's like something that's, uh, that's amplifying our collective healing and collective revelation and ending like faith in one person as the answer, you know, it's all those dynamics just going away, you know, so that we truly do feel, choose, self-realize that, that we do need to unify 
-hmm. you know, and not unifying against, but unifying as love, as peace, as, you know, making that choice. Hey, we don't want any of that. You know, you're being given these very different choices right now. And it's beautiful to look at that and go, okay, the external is, is what it is, but what's really happening, you know, cause that's just the out picturing of a big collective intentions and emotions and everything getting thrown back through the, the feedback machine, right? The big hall of mirrors that is <laughs> these realities. And you can wander around and stare at one point of the hall of the mirror and really get focused on that. And oh my gosh, I was totally transfixed. Now I'm gonna go over here. You know, it's, it's just a big fun house, right? <laughs> but when you close your eyes and you kind of tap into, oh, how is this serving my journey? What do I still need to learn? I don't, you know, all that stuff collectively happening on a global level, people dealing with relationship, all that stuff that's been going on. Now that you've had 10 months, 11 months, by the time we get to December to deal with all of that, then the frequency comes in that kind of yanks the veils away. Mm -hmm. And it's not yanking the veils away on the bad guy. It's yanking the veils away on your heart so when a really strong frequency of divine love of recoding comes in, then people all of a sudden start feeling that sense of self-realization, not fully and completely the way some of the masters have, but, uh, but a kind of dimmed down version of that, just opening the door, you know, for people who have completely closed hearts, you know, kind of opening the door like, hey, there's another, there's another choice, there's another realm. It changes your perception on realities. Mm. I like it. I like it. I like the way it feels because it does feel like for, for me, I'm just going to be concentrating on that because I, I know, I because I, I know myself, mm -hmm. you know, I know what it does to my consciousness. Well, you know what it does to your physicality as well. So for me, again, mm -hmm. anytime I deviate from it, it's such a visceral physical risk. It's, it's an emotional, it's a physical, mm -hmm. spiritual response simultaneously. So if I deviate a little bit, it's, I kind of know what I'm doing to myself. And it's finding the path back into that balance, again, into that trinity, into the three aspects of the balance. It's, there's been a practice in that and it's being refined and we're noticing so much more quickly, at least I am, um, when I'm off that center and I know how to find my way back home, if you will, it's just so yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. There's like these beautiful micro movements, if you want to call them that, mm -hmm. of state change. I've been calling it a creator state change. I'm just like a little, little adjustment because you can feel it. And it, it is that visceral reaction to, ah, that's not where I want to be. You know, it's like immediately like just feeling like weepy and you're like, oh, that's not, I don't want to go back there. I don't want to go back there. You know, you, you have this stronger desire to create balance and peace and harmony within than anything else, right? All the coping mechanisms, just dying slow deaths. And now if it's on, like on overdrive, it's just like, it's not going to work anymore, mm -hmm. right? all the behaviors and habits that you use to cope with how you felt or whatever. It's all just raw now, raw and, and open. It's quite beautiful. Well, and we bring peace within ourselves, all those places where we're in chaos within ourselves, the peace comes in. And again, the, the way you titled today's talk about the peacemakers, it's like in everybody who's on this call and who's listened to the replay, they're going through their versions of these experiences they are the peacemakers for humanity and of the world. How can as peacemakers, as we individually get into that center within ourselves, how is it that we can be of service to others in, in recognizing this within themselves? Just like we're, with our role in this ascension, yeah. Yeah, walking your talk. I mean, for, for some people, we have to honor that there are unique expressions. So you can't tell everyone, you got to go out there and be a way shower and post a million things and be on social media, parenting people all day. No, no, that's not everybody. Mm -hmm. Some people, that's where they are in their journey and they really want to do that and they really want to help and get out there and everything. 
that for, for me personally, that has not been the energy this year. You know, I have, I have uh, wanted to, to move on, you know, to different creations and everything be there for people, but in a different way. And I'm still learning what that is, but I know that I have to honor it because otherwise it just feels, it feels awful, right? When you get off, but yeah. when you're not on, on purpose, you're just like, ah, that doesn't feel good anymore, you know, kind of thing. And it gets amplified now. So for a lot of people, it is as easy as being really present with fellow humans uh, as you possibly can be. You know, we're walking around in, in these collective realities where there are a lot of people who are just, the polarization is very strong for them. So if we can walk as, as emanations of patience, <laughs> you know, mastery level patience and peace, don't make it worse. A lot of things right now are just don't make it worse. Mm. You know, speak love, speak peace, speak up if that's where you are, you know, but there's no fight. It's like the, it's like uh, we finally realized, well, a lot of us have finally realized if you keep picking up the sword, going after the monster, it's a never ending battle. Yeah. You're con constantly creating more issues, more problems, more fight. And when you realize that's what the monster lives off of, you know, if it has nothing to fight, it will go away, right? <laughs> so it's like the unity unifying to create uh, harmony, understanding, and creative solutions. That's key. Creating creative solutions together and then presenting them mm -hmm. to people who suddenly found themselves in charge of a, a, a brand new situation, right? Yeah. And you can blame leadership for whatever you know it's like the, nobody was was thrown this kind of wild card in a long time right so you cannot blame leadership for their their own personal choices but the whole point of new earth and the unity consciousness is to collectively say from a peaceful neutral when i say neutral not charged with you have to do it our way or, you know, or that person has to go, you know, it's not from that point of view, we're dealing with a completely different state of consciousness, that may seem way ahead of its time, because you look around, you're like, Oh, we have to fight, you know, it's like, well, what if you present creative solutions from this space of, hey, we're all in this together, not making somebody the bad guy, the bad girl, whatever, and really coming as a community, as communities coming together and honoring this person wants to do this, this person wants to do that, that's fine. But together, we want the same thing. Yeah. You know, we want peace. Hmm. We want freedom. You want to be able to express yourself. You don't want to be censored, you know, all of those things. But we're all learning together. Even the system, even the old systems that are being dismantled are learning how to evolve into something new. So when we talk about divine neutrality, it's like, all right, you walk as that when you go to the supermarket, when you're at the gas station, how can you add a little light to someone's day, simple random acts of kindness go a long way, but it's really carrying that field, even if you don't say anything, because you're not going out and trying to force joy on people, that won't work. People are irritated. To realize but a lot of people are just irritated and on edge they don't understand what's happening they don't have their perspective mm -hmm. they don't understand that just the dismantling has to happen didn't have to happen this way but it is so full acceptance right timelines mm -hmm. it is what it is all right we all chose that it would go down this way <laughs> right so now we're dealing with it when right. you come from that point of view it's a lot it's a lot easier. Just kind of pull back to the cosmic perspective and go, oh yeah, this whole thing has to crumble, right? Just right. Pulling up the rug and going, oh my goodness, I didn't know that was under there. <laughs> it is what it is. Right. But allowing, you know, allowing your frequency to, to, to affect each other, which is why it's so important to, to completely 
honor, if you're somebody who's feeling those states of bliss or divine love, to completely honor that and not try to go back to what you were before. It's not there. It's not there. New container, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing. Yeah, there's never been a war that's ended all the wars. So we can't be in the illusion that that's going to happen again. And if we're perpetuating. Right. We've heard it. We've heard it over and over again. Can't solve a problem with the same frequency that created it. So there it is. What do you think about the concept of, of our psychic thoughts and emanations that we put out? So we're we're in this space, we could be running bliss. And in this bliss space, the, the compassion and love for other people is just, it's so amplified. So the negative thoughts don't come in in the same way. But as we acclimate into that bliss space, there's still, we're being kind, we're being compassionate, but sometimes those thoughts and we can be at a traffic light and just like beam hatred or disgust or someone because they're not going past the red light or whatever. And those psychic thoughts actually have influence in the field as well. Um, yeah. Do you think that we're just going through this flushing out and it's coming through us and we're, again, attuning to all those emotions, even psychically, of what we're putting out into the world? I don't feel that that's going to continue. This, this idea of um, that you're picking up on the collective and that's why I'm nasty at the red no, light. No, that's our stuff. I'm yeah. saying this is our stuff, yeah. not collective. <laughs> no, this is mine. Yeah, well, even yeah. for uh, John, <laughs> when you're sitting at the red light and you're angry, you know, that's when you catch yourself. That's when yeah. you catch yourself. You like stop, mm -hmm. you know, correct. I always have the three C's, right? Clear, correct, create. Yes. Stop, clear the field. All right, it's just a thought form. Hold on. You know, because all of your thought forms always come back as, as, you know, the energy always returns to the to its creator. So you're like, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, come back, ba, 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 ba. come back, correct, Christ frequency. You know, I, I'm, I'm teaching this right now. If you have, uh, you know, your own personal thoughts, or if something comes at you, that you're just like, oh, you know, like, and especially way showers get it all the time, right? Somebody is like, ah, how dare you go into bliss? You know, come down here with the rest of us, get off the mountain. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, kind of thing. But it is what it is. You know, it's been decades of that. So here it is. There's that thought form again, right? You're like, okay, rather than processing it the way that you used to and exactly, is there anything, you know, I know there's nothing in my field that's doing that anymore. So I'm just like, okay, it is what it is. But I'm, I'm taking it, not embodying it. That's the thing, don't embody it. And if you did, bring it out of your field, bring it in front of you and surround it in this Christed crystalline frequency, divine love, and just let, this is another thing about becoming a pure conduit, let the light, let God transmute it. No judgment, totally neutral. I'm not trying to tr fix it. But let it be, right? Wait, mm -hmm. divine love, divine, it will do it. And you'll see the frequency change because a higher vibration shakes the lower frequency and then it absorbs it, right? Quantum physics, doing the same thing, sending that frequency into that form, that construct, whatever it is, situation and emotion, whatever it is, and then releasing it back to its creator as a blessing as love and not like here's some love for you totally neutral release it back there's nothing here but love let me show mm -hmm. you the reality you know it's just sending it back and it's the same when you catch yourself uh not qualifying your thoughts so and it does go on autopilot every thought is positive and if something's a little off it just mm -hmm. you train yourself like stop and reset correct emanate again right and there's it, it does it trains the body again the body is such a beautiful mechanism because once the subconscious isn't you know throwing up all this old baggage or whatever or irritations or collective or personal or whatever as if the external was to blame you know kind of thing once your your body learns oh we're not doing it anymore and the crystalline light body starts coming online and the ninth strand of DNA, you literally can't create disharmony any, anymore. Mm -hmm. And that flickers on beautiful, every, every thought is Christed all day. And then something happens, you're like, ah, wounded, whatever. 
you know, there's, there's always that, but I, I know, and, and I have experience with this now where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm really getting into that state where there is no ill will Mm -hmm. emanating at all. And when there's vitriol, you know, sent my way or whatever, because of what I do, there's so, I'm like, thank you. It's so, I mean, yeah. it sounds weird. It's just like, thank you. No, it's Bless not you, honey. It's such an emanation of what we were trying to figure out what self-love was. And until you embody that state, it's like, it's another, it's like, whoa, self, it's like, wow, this is self-love. Hold on a second. I'm starting to experience that thing that I've talked about for so long in a way that I haven't before. It's so amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, and you realize that that can be a consistent state of beingness. Mm -hmm. Which is quite beautiful because then the miraculous goes on autopilot. Mm -hmm. You don't have to try to create whatever. It's yeah. just, you're yeah. just like, show me, reveal yourself to me. You know, you, Yogananda used to always say, reveal yourself to me. Mm -hmm. And it's so beautiful to like, show me, show me everything. You know, this is an abundant, infinite vibration playing with all these different fractals of self. And when you really perceive it from that, yeah, you don't get entangled as much. You know, don't get entangled. I know that this, uh, <laughs> you know, the elections and everything coming up, well, they're really going to throw a wrench in the works for a lot of people. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Exactly. Honestly, you know, putting your faith in, in people and systems is, is not the way it's going to work, right? <laughs> it's not the way it's going to work anymore. Well, I love that you said that because for me, it's we're going from a phase of putting faith in others and outside structures into putting faith into ourselves. Yeah. And that's what's coming up. Yeah. Into so each other. I remember, oh my gosh, it was like 99 when I first went clairaudient. And they're like, when you'll realize that your faith in each other is more than enough. Mm. More wow. than enough. Like all this faith in this, that course there's faith and love and and god of course but not saviors and martyrs and things like that you know it's just like you will realize at one point that the faith in each other mm -hmm. is more than enough to get the, to get the job done you know to to change things quite beautiful uh, so beautiful saying i I've got to direct the conversation just a little bit because I'm so curious as what you see in this and then we'll get into a special offer in the Q&A um as a grid keeper, how do you see the, the role of a grid keeper shifting or, or where is it heading to? Because it's, it's like something is happening in the way that we're having a relationship. Yeah. And I've noticed this like beautiful alchemical experience happening with Gaia herself. This beautiful organic thing. I've really been focusing on the organic realities versus the inorganic realities because there was so much like fixing and pushback and everything about the inorganic stuff, you know. And that that stuff left a couple of years ago. The thing that was anchoring that left, and there's still healing of the realities and everything. But when I focus on this organic flow of these like new earth realms, which of course is all around us, right? It's just you lift the veil, it's right there. It's right there. But there's this beautiful relationship with Gaia that, and of course, is, is somebody who's worked with her gateways, these natural, organic, ancient gateways that um, ha have been activated over the last few decades of uh, all of us working together and everything. Now it actually requires uh, more than one person to be there like you can't be the lone gatekeeper running around doing things like it has to it, there has to be the component of course two or more right mm -hmm. so the two or more thing is start, starting to kick in but the um but becoming part of that cosmic gateway system is beautiful there's an alignment there where we're starting to feel the way the galactics are able to beam in and out of your reality so easily. They're like, oh, I'm using a 
portal, you know, started whatever, and you're starting to feel that like that's an organic part of the galaxy of the the multiverse. You're really starting to feel that, and especially since the sun got recoded, now it's like so effortless. There's no like gateway dates and traveling around and trying to activate this and everything. It's this consistent interaction um, and not just ceremony. It's like this beautiful um, new level that we're getting to. Like I, I've been playing around with some sisters with unified viewing. You know, we'll do the unity meditations out on the land again. You know, you want to get your field in that natural um, earth flow uh, that guy is emanating right now. But then we do like unified viewing. You know, we're all holding a crystal, looking into each other's eyes, and you see the same thing. It's happened with a couple of sisters, and I'm just like, this is cool, you know, <laughs> because the DNA is activated, you know, through the eyes. It, the Christ frequency comes out through the eyes, too. And when you're staring at each other, we're like, oh, my gosh, I could, I could see everything. You know, it's really wild. Wow. So th that's the exciting part for, for me. It's not dealing with, like, the big cosmic stargate systems like that is aligned that has done something new as of last year that now the sun gets recoded and then the frequency comes in and just emanates out through the planets through through the consciousness it's quite beautiful so it's yeah they're still getting together out on the land but it's together like it's really it's it's almost demanding the unity part of unity consciousness to step up. And you know, yeah. it's just like, I know you all feel separated and you have to stay away from each other or whatever. But the actual, the real thing that's happening is uh, it's actually revealing, oh, I really need people. <laughs> I really need people in my field. Like I'm an, I'm an introvert. So at the beginning of this whole thing, I was like, yes. <laughs> you know, like, I was kind of loving it for a couple of months. I was like, oh, this is great. You know, like, you know, beautiful. And then, you know, you're like, oh, wait a minute. You know, I just, I really enjoy that part of my life that gets together with brothers and sisters and we play and you do like collective DNA activations and all this like, sacred toning and singing and all the beautiful stuff, you know, and that too um, is creating this alchemical reaction with Gaia, like the, the land feels flowy. You feel that people feel the frequency, you know, we do these meditations together and you got your hands out on the, on the red rocks, which are full of crystals. And you feel like the electricity coming up your arms and stuff. You're like, Whoa, is everybody feeling that, you know, it's kind of cool. And then, of course we see the same things and feel the same things and there's just this again that frequency that crystalline christed frequency coming spiraling out of the ground it does feel like spiraling energy coming out where it's this um it used to feel like a strong divine mother influx and now it's very balanced mm -hmm. it's got that divine masculine in it that balancing activity that happened with the September equinox, all of a sudden it was just like the scales just went. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm so glad you said that. It's I've been on Kauai and I used to call mother. Yeah. I used to call her mama Kauai all the time and I'm oh. telepathically and it's so beautiful in the relationship and felt so held by, by Gaia here on Kauai, mama Kauai. And this year she's like, I'm not mother. I'm not mama Kauai for you anymore. You don't need a mother. I'm sensual, I'm sexual. It's like, take me on as a different emanation of what you're more attuning to. Right. And so it's like Gaia is inviting us into that realm with her. Right, exactly. And That's there's like beautiful. all these yeah. beautiful bandwidths of new earth that, uh, that I love to flow into and play with and everything. You know, at the beginning of the year, she's like, I've got seven realms for you to play with this year. Nice. Like seven different frequencies of new earth. And it's, not, of course, it's just not another planet. It's happening right through her. But they're, they are so balanced. You know, it's really, it's really amazing. And it's just eliminating. It's, it's kind of, again, going on autopilot, eliminating illusion, distortion, you know, everything you see in the external world is just the collapse of the old. You have to witness it. Mm -hmm. You have to watch it go away. You know, it's just okay. like, there it is. I've got you here. I have to take advantage of this because you're so attuned with this. 
So in August, I was in California. I was down in Los Angeles for about a month and I kept getting guided to go to Manchester. It was such a strong pull. I, I swear there must've been 15 different people and not together that were going to Manchester from different parts of the country that I consider just very attuned, if you will. I know, I know you were there also. I saw your post, like what is happening in Mount Shasta in August? What was awakening there? Yeah, it was, it was wild. I mean, it, it, it was, it was so beautiful because more and more people kept presenting, like, you're going to be there. I'm going to be there. You're going to be there. I'm going to be over and over again. And I'm like, I don't even live here anymore, you know? And it's just, it was gorgeous. I was there for three weeks and it was constant get togethers and ceremony and getting up on the mountain. And then we, you know, we did a Sunday unity meditation, um, which was beautiful. It was actually the, the first one where we've had a large group together up on the mountain and literally the next day, the mountain closed because of all the fires and high winds and everything like, all right, you know, and we were calling in this vibrational wall, like seal this divine work. Cause there was intense, it went on for hours. We did the yeah. meditation and then there was yeah. sisters with the ceremony and like, we're just, Oh, this keeps going on and on and on and on and on. And then literally the next day, the, the mountain was closed. She was like, all right, everybody step back, you know, kind of thing. But, uh, but some, yeah, some really strong way showers called to the mountain at the same time time and that for me in my perspective was like okay the gates themselves again the sun was getting recoded mm. and shasta is one of those gateways that's directly connected to the cosmic stargates it's a, a major node for yeah. the planet not a chakra but a major node a major gateway so that all those frequencies that were coming in like literally people were taking them on and then going wow. back wherever it was just spread out and you know people who were on specific grid points and oh my gosh it was just it was really beautiful and we were all in this this these states of divine grace just mm. hours and hours and hours on the mountain just sharing each other's company and just being there i love that you know i love that but um but a lot of work was going on yeah, it was quite just sharing it now. I feel like I'm receiving that as well. So thank you so much. Yeah, oh, you're so part welcome. Of me calling me there, but it's like, and I got no. It'll come to you. It'll just take a little bit longer. It's like okay, um, amazing, yeah. amazing. How yeah. collective, just how our consciousness is driving us into this relationship with this cosmic awakening that's right. happening. And that's just here. It's cosmically. It's happening. So right. So beautiful. Oh, it's awesome. amazing. And again, I love how you broke it down because when we bring context to it, it's so empowering because then we have a merging of the mind that's here to serve us as, the, as opposed to the one that we keep trying to reel back in. And so bringing this, it, it provides a sense of stabilization, even on our emotional body, having the information, then the process of going through becomes graceful and it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, so I love the way you broke this down. I have to ask you because again, I landed back on the island of Hawaii last year and I kept hearing about this indigenous culture wanting to wake up and I kept hearing about the rainbow bridge and bridging it in and bringing it back in. And it was all this telepathic communication that was happening for me to attune to. And part of the modules here, the last module that I see listed is the rainbow bridge DNA and the frequency of Christ. Can you describe a little bit of what that entails? Yeah, well, there's actually a, a vibration codes, if you want to call it that, but there's a field that's created when the DNA is working in harmony, when, when the strands are getting reconnected and the structure, your own, you know, the DNA is completely at the mercy of your subconscious emanations <laughs> until you change things, right? So we do all this stuff in our ascension process, kind of clear the fields and everything so that we can tell the DNA to do something new and you start steering in that direction. And like I said, it's a key to that crystalline light body. Some people call it the rainbow body, but that's the bridge. You know, there's no bridge from this earth to the next earth. You know, the rainbow bridge is about the consciousness. It's about the frequency. A lot of people seeing that, you know, the kind of pastel rainbow light overlays, or you see these beings, other versions of you coming into your field, or you see it in your own, your own field, this kind of interesting diamond 
light pastel rainbow bridge thing. So the rainbow bridge was encoded with the with the living library that Gaia is. She's like, when the frequency gets high enough, I will start sending out these codes, which a lot of people feel very strongly when the Schumann resonance, you know, starts spiking. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh my gosh, you either get really stimulated or really knocked out. You know, it depends <laughs> again what your DNA is doing on that day. But that's, you know, the we're all crossing this etheric bridge to this other state of consciousness, a different way of being, you know, mm. and that's always been the rainbow bridge. It's, but just like crossing any bridge, you get distracted, you look over the bridge at the water that's going underneath the bridge, you know, <laughs> oh, you know, you're, I can't really see what's on the other side of that bridge. So I'm just going to hang back and watch somebody else go over first, you know, it's just, it's a beautiful metaphor for what we're going through with the ascension process. But there are, um, nodes again uh, uh like you know shasta haleakala uh kawaii that are part of that you know kind of merging the past that lemurian energy that you get in hawaii with the the future you know the new earth crystalline ascended divine human realms again we're collapsing time so that we can experience what we have learned and what we're going to play with in the now you know, so that's part of that bridge experience is, okay, I'm going to leave everything behind me and just take step by step, you know, like the ascension staircase, you can't see the step until you make the step, you know, it's just like this invisible staircase, right? It's a crossing the bridge, but using, I love that, that we all use this rainbow crystalline bridge, right? Because it is that frequency, you know, if you're not aligned with it, you're not going to see it. You're not going to feel it when you do. You're like, ah, now I want to go further. Yeah. Just like the bliss states. Oh, I want to keep that going all the time, right? And the desire is there. That's crossing the bridge. Mm. Yeah. So and for you, for you, darling, you know, Kauai does that. It wants you there. You know, it, it calls you. It's just like Shasta called me and now, you know, Sedona for the time being. Just like, please just be here. You know, and that has to do again with our DNA talking to structures, things that we planted in the etheric realms, in the inner earth, you know, communication and everything. You walk into a zone with your DNA that's got a code and the code matches the code that you planted there in the past, you know, and all of a sudden, blah, you know, you're feeling the, the portal, the stargate, you know, the, the higher energy, the activation. Yeah. Uh -huh. Beautiful. not on this journey that we're on and the more we recognize and have a relationship yeah. with it the more we understand that it's having and making love with us it's just yeah. it's just it's just it's just this flowing that happens it's so beautiful hi john hi sandra um thank you sister. thank you for choosing me to ask a question okay so my question is um what if the chaos is due to the uh, dismantling of the self, um, the dismantling of the way one used to operate pre-pandemic. Uh, pre I mean, because it feels like for me, like it's been just total emotional and even uh, mental and physical chaos. It's upheaval going on. It's all kinds of stuff is coming up. And I'm wondering how to stabilize, you know, the emotional and everything else and how to support myself. Um, the best way I can and the people around me, or you just starting with myself first, obviously, um, so that I can move into, you know, whatever way, I'm to, you know, as opposed to pushing back against it, how to flow with it and you know, or whatever it looks like, because it's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was interesting because back uh, at the end of last year, we were kind of warned, hey, it's going to be this collective global, global dismantling. And like, we couldn't even fathom, like, what does that look like? What does it feel like and everything? But it is this collective dismantling of the old self because it's no longer, it's not applicable in the for the frequency that we're moving into. So we get this really rapid fire dismantling of everything that we are, and you can look at the external and go, that's what that's going on out there, but it's going on inside as well. Complete dismantling 
releasing the old self, the identity, every, everything is getting an opportunity, you know, this revelation, an opportunity to change. And resistance to change is the hardest place you can put yourself in during this. It's just like, no, I, I want to go back. There is no back. There's nothing back there. It's literally like that part of the bridge has collapsed behind us. Well, you can't go back to the way that it was in 2019. None of us will. I've, I've heard this in collective ceremony too. The sisters were up on Mount Shasta. They were like, nothing will ever be the same. You know, like this message coming through, like, there is no going back. You guys are way beyond the point of no return. Now, when you treat that for your, for your own life stream going, whew, you know, you got to breathe into that and go, okay, so in this now, how do I feel? Do I feel really insecure? Do I feel really off balance? What do I need in this moment in order to get into balance because all the spiritual a lot of people all the spiritual practices kind of went out the window when the global dismantling started you know because all of a sudden they're distracted by like what's happening now as if online were real right <laughs> as if you know what what people were throwing back and forth online had anything to do with your personal journey you know it's just like well i know that's happening but hold on a second because you can spend you you know your entire life stream being distracted by the external or about by what other people are doing. But if it is our, our task, if it is our intention to become creator incarnate, of course, you're going to be self-empowered. It's going to come from your heart. You get to know your own heart. So highest recommendation, if you're having a hard time with this, shut off the, the online world and start doing the, the inner work going, who am I now? What do I desire? What needs to go? What needs to change? What has been revealed? If you go to, if you go to uh, my website, I've got a 2020 ebook. It was free at the beginning of the year. Walked everyone through these questions. <laughs> Who am I now? What do I need to let go of? How, what relationships need my attention? What do I need to surrender? Because a lot of it is just, surrendering the old way of being and then facing the fears of you know a lot of a lot of people have uh disincarnated this year because you know their their job and what they felt was security was taken away and they lost it they they were totally identified with their worthiness being attached to their job their ability to provide you know they they could not see beyond what was happening with the illusion and the collapse and the dismantling and everything. And they just checked out. You know, so, so this is the point where the tools, the spiritual tools that everyone who has spoken to you on John's show uh, provides, you know, that's the foundational stuff that you're like, whoa, if I didn't create the foundation for my process that begins with unconditional love, of self and self-love and self-care, two different things. You can do all the self-care salves you like, but the self-love has to be unwavering and it gets challenged and you grow every time it gets challenged. But when you have that foundational platform of self-love, everything else is okay. You know, when we talk about divine neutrality, that is that unwavering love of the experience of being here, of God of divine mother, whatever it is that you believe in your heart or have faith in, in your heart, when that gets challenged, it's the unwavering part that brings you back to center where you're like, okay, so I need to create a new way to work, a new way to provide a new way of, of being. So you got, you know, everybody's like, all right, I got to get on it. How do I get the skills that I need? How do I get what I need? You know, this is an abundant universe. How do I get what I need when I need it? And you start small and you start making those micro movements. You avoid looking at what the external is arguing about because that's just polarities playing up, right? Death of polarity playing out in the external. But for, for us, you know, if you've made that choice, hmm, I, I want something else. I want something else is based on love. If your foundation 
is love and self-love, you're, you're good because every time it seems overwhelming, too hard, too much pushback, too much rolling a boulder uphill, whatever, you'll pause, you'll stop, you'll sit on Gaia, or sit by a tree or sit in your living room or sit on your bed and you'll go, I am. And you'll reconnect to that core, to that unwavering core. And that Christed heart was reignited in every single being on the planet in 2011. So there's no excuse. It's not like, oh, I got to pull my heart back. It's always been there, you know, but the Christed spark, you know, the ability to take on a divine human template is there. And even though it seems, you know, if you watch people who are further across the bridge than you are, you're like, oh, they're dealing with it so well and everything. All of us are going through dismantling of some kind. And for, for a lot of us, you know, you get to that point over the last couple of years where you, you're losing your identity and, and the ego is gone. You're just, oh my gosh, like, how am I going to move forward and continue teaching? I don't even know what I'm turning into. You know, I feel it. I keep seeing her, but it's not, it's not fully embodied yet, you know, and you have these visions and everything, but it's the things you do in the moment. <sighs> I'm good. I'm good. This is good. Change is good. You know, change over habit is the name of the game. So if you have coping mechanisms or habits, or you do the same thing, or you check the same outlets for give me information, give me, tell me what's going on or whatever, that's not where it's at. It's change over habit. So you break the habit, stop, correct, create your own inner life, your own inner reality. And then the outside reality starts reflecting that. Does that make sense, sister? It does. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. then at some point, the fun part will start. <laughs> it already it has. Does. <laughs> it does. I mean, it, it already has. You know, remember that you're part of us. I'm talking to myself right now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> remember that we're a collective and it's like, oh, yeah. You know, like looking through the big mirror ball prism of, of source, having all these different experiences. We're all going to the same place, right? It's all collective. So even, you know, like the earlier quote, uh, if faith in each other will be more than enough. So you celebrate the people that are experiencing bliss. Yes, because as soon as you anchor that into the collective field, then I can grab onto it, right? I can be empowered. I can feel that, you know? So understand that it is a collective thing, and I see so much of myself reflected in you, sister, because I know exactly where you are on your spiritual journey. And I know that it feels weird and challenging, disappointing sometimes, you know, but you do get to a point where you retrain and clear the subconscious enough that you're like, oh, I was just believing that it was this, that, and the other thing, you know, it's just, again, the clearing the letting it go, the, all right, today I'm going to do something different. Always set the energy forth in the morning. Morning is your, your golden hours, right? I'm going to sit there and until I can feel uh, my, my trajectory for the day, my intention, my heart, God, you know, until you can do that, you don't move, right? And it, it's, at first it's like half an hour, then it's 10 minutes, then it's a moment, you know, again, you just retrain the body, the DNA to give you a different experience. And it's just consistency. And again, it feels like rolling boulders uphill for a lot of the spiritual journey, but the reward, you know, like, you know, John and I are like, oh my gosh, like this is beyond the ordinary. <laughs> this, is, this is like, I didn't expect this, you know, and it's just, and it just comes at you. That's the thing. Like the more you open your heart, all of a sudden something new, a new vibration, a new field, it, it gets more and more uh, abundant. And then you won't carry, you know, you care, but you don't carry the burden of, oh, am I going to make this work? Everyone's going through that collectively because the whole collective 
has to change. We know that the, we knew for a long time that the old way did not work. And when it starts collapsing, you feel like, oh, you're kind of thrown off your horse. You know, you're just kind of like, oh, hey, wait a second. I knew it was coming, but ah, you know, it's a little intense, you know, especially this year. But that's when you, you tap into the heart, you tap into that foundational platform of self-love and go, well, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine because I command it so. It's going to be rough. I'm not saying it's not going to be challenging. The whole thing is challenging. That's the whole reason why we're here, right? But you're like, okay, today I'm going to take a little micro movement. What's the first thing? I got to learn a new skill. You know, if I can go to the office, do this job, whatever, you know, people are working that out spiritually. I got to learn something new, you know, whatever it is. And just making those micro movements because, you know, that sometimes a little 10 minute thing will float your whole day. You're just like, wow, I really did that one thing this morning that launched a whole different energy, you know, and you celebrate that. It seems silly. You're like, how come the whole, my whole reality didn't change in a day? You know, you just make these little micro movements so that you retrain the realities to give you a different feedback. I hope that makes sense, sister. Yeah, it does. Thank you. It, Aisha, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you so much, Sandra. Oh, my God. It's exactly what I needed today. Thank you. This week. Thank you. Yeah, one thing I want to share, and, and it's a reflection for everybody listening. Aisha, this energy, this emanation that you feel in Sandra, this is her other side of an experience, perhaps, that was similar as yours in different ways. So it's the compassion and love and the wisdom that you feel through Sandra. This is what you're blossoming into as well. And so Sandra went through her version of it. I went through my version of where I'm sitting now. You're going through your version of it now, but this is the amplification that, that sunlight, if you will, that's, that's meeting you. So what a beautiful mirror and reflection Sandra is for this process that you're gifting to yourself. So if you wanted a time to celebrate, I'd say celebrate this metamorphosis that you're in right now because it's all happening for you not to you it's a gift it's a gift and again this is the reflection of the people that you admire and that you lean into that's yours to have and that's yours as a reflection of your own divinity and your own love for yourself so thank you for doing what you're doing and for saying this to in different ways how do you discover the truth i find so there's definitely a lot of trial and error when it comes to truth because in the moment and th this is this is another thing i'm going to i'm going to revisit divine neutrality because a lot of times things can seem stimulating enough that it must be the truth right you stumble across something online oh that must be the truth that must be the reason for that and that's why that blah, 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 you know on and on and on I found with, uh, with utilizing divine neutrality, stepping back as a, as a person who is dedicated to becoming a effective peacemaker uh, in these realms and hopefully uh, an ascended being in the flesh, when you kind of step back from other energies kind of influence, not influencing you like, oh, come over here, or when you feel your consciousness kind of like clinging to something or getting excited about something. I'm always, I'm not wary of it, but I've trained myself to be uh, in observer mode. So it's just kind of like, well, let's see. And then there's always this beautiful divine neutrality thing. Is it true? Is it not true? Is it none of my business? And wow, I spend a lot of time in none of my business, not worth my time, not applicable to my reality that'll work itself out. I mean, when you really get into this perspective and you have that connection with the higher self and, and the I am presence, a lot of times, you know, that higher self that merges with us is just like, don't even look at that. Don't even pay attention to that. And you kind of use your heart compass again, the scale, right? The feather and the diamond heart, right? Here's your heart. Here's the feather on the other side. How does it feel? How does it feel? Does that feel open and expanding? 
Is it amplifying love? Is it amplifying what I desire? Because you got to make the choice first, right? What's my, what's my modus operandi? What's my goal? You know, when you make the, the choice, okay, if you want to be in pursuit of truth, whose truth? Of course, your own truth. Seven billion versions of truth running on the planet, right? And that's the point. When you really honor that, that's the point. It's the creator shining through all of us going, let me just see what happens with this, that. What if I was John Burgos? What if I was Sandra Walter? What if I was, you know, what if I did this, played with that? And that's, that's your own version of the truth. So when you decide, when you make that choice early on in your ascension process, your spiritual journey, I want to know the truth of divine love. I want to know the truth of God. What's God about? You know, you, you make a choice. Mm. Then whatever presents, it's either complimenting you discovering more about that or it's not. And there's a whole lot of not. <laughs> there's a whole lot of distraction out there and people going, this is the truth. Come over here. Come to my camp. Come to my cult. Come to my belief system. Come, <laughs> you know, over here. It's just, ah, you know, yeah. and I honor all of it. It is what it is, right? So all of us sorting out what's going on here. But I find when um, when people attach to things being the truth, sometimes you could be really disappointed when that turns out not to be the truth, right? So again, the neutrality of like, what makes me feel like I'm learning more about the love within? What makes me feel like I'm learning more of something that's applicable to my journey, to my choices, that's where the discernment comes in as to what you put your attention on, because what you put your attention on grows, right? What you meditate on becomes your reality. So I've, I've often warned people about, watch out for the whole, like trying to find the truth and, and disclose things and reveal things and all the dark stuff. It's like, yeah, that'll all play out. That's collapsing, right? That's what we're watching right now. All that stuff collapsing. Is it the truth? It was part of the illusion, right? So I find that the thing that permeates my realities is the truth of divine love, of the source frequency, of the ascension process itself. And I am in hot pursuit of that all the time from this state of divine neutrality. Because a lot of people are going to tell you different things about the ascension too. You just pick and choose as to what makes you feel like it's part of your journey, part of the step in that moment. And when you're done with it, you're done with it. Mm. And you move on and you move on and it keeps expanding. But if it's, if it doesn't feel like an expansive freeing, like if it's freeing consciousness, if it feels like an old story or it feels like something that makes you feel contracted, mm. done, not part of your higher truth or higher pursuit of truth. I hope that helps. That was tremendous. It's also an aspect of self-love and self-discernment and the practice of that. Like what's really serving us? How can I serve myself? Um, and again, it's an act of self-love as far as I consider it, which is amazing. I have to clarify something. The email I sent out earlier um, is about Sandra. Sandra, this is going to be your last telesummit interview. Um, not in 2021, do you plan on doing one? At least that's the version of the truth today. We'll call it that. Um, taking, taking a year <laughs> off to do different things. I'm, yeah. I'm just changing my services. And, and I was like, well, I need to, you know, I need to clear some things off my plate so that I can have a different meal right now. And yeah. the meal that I want to have includes like all these different things that take a more linear time and more focus and a shift. You know, this has been a great year of change. So I'm like, all right, let's just step back from a couple of things, adding a couple new things, you know, and the, and the thing is too, I, I desire to be more focused and more clear and more intentional about doing certain things that I have wanted to do for a while yeah. that have been kind of pushed back because I'm always moving around and go here and do that. And, you know, I'm, I'm just like, Ooh, what if? We just step back from all of that, you know. Oh, it's so beautiful. So well, blessing. See what happens. Everything you're created, and we can't wait to, to play with you on the other side of that. 
And for all of y'all who read the email, no, beyond the ordinary show, and I'm going to continue being here in lots of different ways also, but the show as well. And I'm expanding and growing into different avenues, which will be so much fun to share with all of you. Uh, for Fasandra, it's again, just, I, I can't wait what your heart's choosing to express for yourself and, and how we get to play and, and, and celebrating <laughs> and celebrating you, celebrating yourself. So it's so beautiful.